Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the fourth ever BTL exclusive mid-major college basketball conference tourney preview on the Book It Sports Podcast Network. March is here, folks. Congrats to those who celebrate the greatest month of sports. Javon, we put out a graphic the other day with odds on the best month to bet on sports. March was obviously the favorite. Okay, it's got March Madness. Come on, give me a break. Conference tournaments, it's electric. Are there any other months that even competes with March uh, when it comes to betting, Javon? It's hard to argue that while you're here. When you're in March and kind of engulfed in all of March Madness and right now the conference tournaments, it's just awesome. It's awesome to be here, honored to be here, and I'm excited. And, you know, I go as far to say the conference tourneys might even be better than the NCAA tournaments, right? You got games on literally all day, every day. You've got the mid-majors, the ball sack states, if you will, you know, fighting for their seasons to stay alive. I respect it, right? You see a couple conferences every year. You got random McGee's coming out of there and then going into March Madness. I honestly think the conference tournaments might even be cooler, you know, watching these schools uh, like Queens right now, you know, down one to, to FGCU in the A-Sun tourney, you know, playing their hearts out, just trying to stay alive and keep their season moving, right, and just staying alive. So I really enjoy the conference tournaments. Uh, man, I might even like them better than March Madness. And Javon, we're going to talk about it. Okay, we're going to go over the mid-majors today on this podcast. It's currently Monday nights, March 4th. And like I said, the ASUN, the first round is already active. We've got Queens, my beloved Queens, in a tight battle right now with FGCU down one. We will see how that game plays out. By the time you guys are listening to this, Queens season will either be, you know, barely alive, hanging on by a thread, or it'll be toast. Either way, uh, what, a, what a great year for Queens after losing Kenny Dye. Love watching that squad. But Javon, we got to bring this full circle. Postseason college basketball is here, Okay. And that's exactly what we're going to talk about today. On this pod, we're going to cover all the mid-major conferences, you know, starting up their tournaments this week. There's going to be some heavy favorites or teams we simply don't want to go over and not talk about all the time. Um, and in those conferences, we'll speed through them, okay? But there's a couple good tournaments starting up this week that I think the people want to hear about, Javon. The WCC, right? Uh, absolute wagons in that conference with Gonzaga and St. Mary's. We're going to talk about them. And then some of these other mid-majors going on, like I said, the A-Sun, the Sun Belt, the Horizon, the Patriots, all these mid-majors that you guys love betting on all season. We're going to go over who we think is going to win these puppies, okay? Before we start off, though, Javon, before we dive in, I want to let the people know to drop a like and follow us on Spotify and wherever they get their podcasts, okay? We're going to be grinding these during the college basketball postseason and during the MLB season as well, getting you guys prepped. So please drop a follow, drop a like, leave a review. And let us know what you guys think of the podcasts, okay? We're going to go over these conferences in chronological order. Javon, meaning the ones that begin the soonest, like the A-Sun, which is going on right now, we're going to cover first. And then we're going to also drop timestamps in the description for each conference as well. That way, if you want to go ahead and skip through and just hear about, you know, your specific school or the conference that you follow, you can do that with ease, okay? So without further ado, Javon, why don't we go ahead and dive in, cut the shit, if you will, and talk about this ASUN tournament that just started up. Do you have any angles, any teams you like in the ASUN this year, Javon? And, and no cheating, okay? Um, I know the people listening are going to be um, in the future a little bit, and they're not going to know these first couple teams. Are they alive? Are they dead, right? Is Queen still hanging around? Is FGCU still hanging around? Kennesaw State, Jacksonville, right? Are they still alive? Some bigger names from this conference playing on the first day. Very interesting. Where is your head at with the ASUN, Javon? So first of all, I think this tournament's going to be really good uh, for a couple of reasons because a lot of these teams, this should be like one of the more exciting tournaments, I think, because you have a lot of teams like Eastern Kentucky, like a North Florida, uh, even like an Austin Pay who's getting healthy now. They, these teams are very fun to watch. They're offensive base. There should be a lot of points, which also kind of in my head translates to betting value because a lot of these games are going to be super high variance like we've seen kind of all year, which is why – I got to say, like, Eastern Kentucky, I think they got a tough draw. Like, looking in, this very much depends on what's happening right now as we're kind of watching this Kennesaw-Jacksonville game that's within a possession. There's a – I know they they reseed and everything, so we don't know how exactly it's going to go in the semis, but there's a chance they go and they get Jacksonville, who is a complete, like, contrast of style. They're a heavy defensive team. EKU loves to run, so it's a chance they have to do that in the first round. Then there's a chance they have to go and see – one of the two teams of the four five matchup and Austin pay who's starting to get healthy and looks really, really good the last couple of weeks or North Florida, one of the few teams really 
in the entire conference who can run with them. So I got to say I have trouble believing that EKU is going to escape from this tournament unscathed. So like I am kind of pointing myself more towards a team that I've seen a little bit over the past week. It's a, a Stetson, which they're in the bottom half of the bracket, which again, things could change dramatically with the wins that happen and the reseeding that happens in the semis. But Stetson's a team that they're not as heavy as like a contrast of styles like a Jacksonville, but they have the ability to play a little slower and better defensively. And they've got the veteran guard leadership to kind of do it. So if uh, everything shakes out how I kind of think it is in the quarterfinals, EKU could be in a little bit of trouble. So I'm definitely leaning a little play on Stetson to win the whole thing. Wow, a little value play. Before I give my play, my winner for this conference, why don't I give you guys a little breakdown here? Okay, so this tournament does start up on March 4th. Today, the day we're recording this podcast, so you guys get a little bit of a head start there. Uh, the winner of Kennesaw and Jacksonville uh, will play Eastern Kentucky, like Javon was just talking about, on their home floor on Tuesday. And the winner of FGCU and Queens will play Stetson on Tuesday nights on their home floor. Okay, After tonight, these games all take place at the higher seeds home courts. Very interesting. Okay, You give an advantage to that team with a better seeds, and all the rounds reseed in the semifinals, like Javon was saying as well. So the defending champion is Kennesaw. All right. Is Kennesaw going to make any noise this year? They've really taken a step back. I'd be willing to bet they don't. The favorite this year is Eastern Kentucky, like Javon was saying. They're sitting right now at plus 140. And then you've got Stetson at plus 350 right behind them. Lipscomb hanging around the plus 300s as well. And then a little bit of a drop off with, with Austin Pay and then some of the other schools you mentioned, like North Florida at plus 2000s. Okay, Javon. So a little bit of a gap uh, between the top couple teams and, and the rest of the group. Um, and I think I'm with you, man. Look, I don't want to go with Eastern Kentucky in this box. I feel like there's going to be a random team that comes out of it. Why not go with my beloved Queens, who's playing right now, take a stab at the plus 8,000s. Ooh, there's some value in the first conference tournament preview. And let's see if our guys uh, can carry up the momentum that they built from last season. Okay, Queens right now still building FGCU. They're beating them right now. Uh, I'm really impressed with this team, you know, losing Kenny Dye. They've still got A.J. McKee. Um, and a bunch of other really good guards like Bryce Cash as well. Uh, this team has still not played their best basketball this season, and I'm going to take a flyer, a value play, if you will, on Queens. Now, the time you're listening to this, they might already be dead, all right? And if I had a better favorite option, I'd give it to you. I don't. I think this conference is wide open. I would go with anybody but Eastern Kentucky, and I'm going to take a flyer on Queens. Yeah, I'm right there with you. I think the, uh, the, the problem for me or where I was looking at, like the teams at the bottom at the bracket right now, like Lipscomb and Northern Alabama, two like painfully bad defenses that I think anybody who gets them the winner of that game in the semifinals, it's a free trip to the, uh, the championship game. So I am interested to see how the reseeding shakes out and what happens in the quarterfinals. Cause it could get very interesting. And let's also not forget that Eastern Kentucky, the favorites to win this conference tournament is coming in off of two losses. Yeah. Didn't finish the season so strong. Mm -mm. We'll see how that plays out. All right, there's your A-Sun coverage there. Um, and anybody who's listening, I've got Queens at plus 8,000. Javon going with a little bit of a more realistic play with Stetson at plus 350. We'll see how that plays out. All right. Go. Why don't we head over to the Sun Belts, a.k.a. the Fun Belts. And there are some fun teams in this conference this season, Javon. This tournament also starts up on Tuesday, March 5th. All the games will be played at the Pensacola Bay Center um, the Sun Belt's been going there since 2021. Uh, they made that their little home here for the conference tourneys. The top four seeds earn a double bye into the quarterfinal rounds. And this year, that'll be App State, James Madison, Marshall, and Arkansas State. Ooh, a little dark horse there. The defending champs, uh, University of Louisiana, they're sitting right now at plus 1,000, not looking like they're going to make a run this season. Javon, the favorite by far, it's got to be JMU. It's got to be the Dukes coming off this incredible season, sitting at plus 135. Yeah, and they're definitely the team that I would lean coming out of here. Um, I assume that you're with me in that because it just seems like this is a, a team of destiny with the season they've put together. They're just strong on every single end. But I will say there is a team that I can't stop thinking about. I don't know if they're going to give JMU problems necessarily, but they could shake up something a little before that because it would take them two rounds to get there. Texas State is looking at me really funny, which they're in the opening round as the 11 seed. and. They'd have to get through Old Dominion and Southern Miss and then play Troy and then get to James Madison. So, I mean, it would take a lot for them to get there. I don't think they're going to win the whole thing, but 
they've played every team in this conference super tough. And a, a lot of that has to do with their defense. So I would not be surprised, you know, if they get through, you know, struggling and you know, everybody knows the coaching situation with Old Dominion. It's just a weird place for them to be in right now. So I don't have much trouble thinking Texas State can get past them. And then the Southern Miss team, who knows what you're going to get from them on any given day. If they can make their way to the quarters against one of those top four seeds, I wouldn't be surprised if it just gets weird with them. Texas State, a program that's had some success in this conference in recent years, got off to a slow start this year. Let's see if the Bobcats can make some noise at what, plus 13,000? Yeah, around? I mean, I don't, I don't think they're going to win the whole thing, but I wouldn't be surprised if they pull like an upset or two. And one of those could very well include, you know, Troy if they get to the quarters. Hmm. Yeah, I want nothing to do with Troy. The two teams looking at me funny, obviously, are the two favorites here, James Madison and App State, who I think are a little bit above the rest. Um, if I had to take a dark horse, I'd probably go with Arkansas State. I feel like they're getting disrespected here a little bit. They're typically moose. But this season, they've been solid, and they earned themselves a four seat. You can grab them a plus a 1,000. That's probably the value or flyer play uh, that I would take, or maybe a big-name school like Marshall, who really didn't put it together all season. We know they're more talented than the product we saw on the court this year. Maybe they make some noise, and they get a little bit of a reset going into the conference tournament. I don't know. I just think you lay it with the Dukes. It's their season. Fat Edwards, right? Terrence Edwards Jr., a.k.a. Fats, um, one of the best nicknames in college basketball. He is legitimately one of the better guards in the country. And they've got TJ Bickerstaff as well, Noah Friedel. This JMU team is stacked. Uh, I think they're one of the best mid-majors in the country. I don't see how you don't take them a plus money here. I agree. I'm right there with you. It just feels like the Dukes year, man. Football, they went undefeated almost the whole season, made some noise, college basketball. You know, they're putting a ton of money into their college basketball program down there in JMU and Harrisonburg. Uh, and it's starting to show. They've got some real good talent. Terrence Edwards, one of the best players in the tournament, okay, uh, if not the best player in this Sunbelt tournament. So I think he carries his JMU Dukes team to a conference championship. Okay? Yep. Dubs, let's move on to the Horizon Conference. Interesting. All right, this one starts up on Tuesday, March 5th as well. Each first rounds and the quarterfinal rounds will be played at the home arena of the higher seats. Okay, another one of those weird tournaments where the higher seeded team gets a serious advantage in every matchup. The semifinals and the championship, though, once they get to that point, those get played at Indiana Farmers Coliseum in Indianapolis. Okay, so the first couple rounds, sure, the uh, higher seeds get the advantage, but once you get to the semis, they go play in Indianapolis. Okay, the defending champs in this conference is Northern Kentucky, all right? The favorite this year is Youngstown State, sitting at plus 200, and not shortly behind them, you've got Oakland at plus 280, Wright State at plus 300, and then you get a little bit of a drop-off with Green Bay at plus 1100, okay? Uh, Javon, it looks like uh, Youngstown State, like I was saying, is the favorites. Are you taking them to win this conference this year? Who else are you going with? Yeah, I mean, this conference is a crapshoot to me because a lot of these teams, nobody really sticks out as like the dominant team where despite the path they get, they like should win. Because like I look at a lot of these teams like Green Bay, you know, they had a magical season. It kind of started to fall apart towards the end. And a lot of that had to do with Noah Reynolds not being fully healthy. And it looks like he's going to go in this tournament, but we'll see how healthy it is and how much it helps them. But uh, I don't know if I can trust them. I don't know if I can trust Wright State, who might have the worst defense of all time. Youngstown State has shown flashes of, you know, being extremely vulnerable. And same with Oakland. So, I mean, I, I definitely lean Oakland winning this tournament, especially because you can think they're going to get a pretty favorable draw. I'm not the biggest Youngstown State fan, and that's who they'd be matched up with, assuming they beat the uh, lowest remaining seed that comes out of the first round there. So I think they can get to the finals. That's probably my my favorite path. Uh, would be Oakland, so I'd lean them to get there. And again, just a lot of those teams in the bottom, I, I have trouble trusting. And I would say, like one of the teams in the back end for that first round that's looking at me really funny is Cleveland State to make some noise, which I'm not really thinking uh, pretty clearly of where they would go, depending on you know how the rest of the round shakes out. But it's a team with a veteran guy, you know, veteran big man, which against a lot of these teams who really can't get much offense at the rim going, that could be a huge asset. So uh, another one of those back-end teams I wouldn't be shocked to see make something weird. Well, as long as he didn't say IUPUI or Detroit Mercy as a flyer. Yeah, at the bottom there. it's hard to say that. Really hard Two to say Two of the worst that. teams in college basketball. Two of the worst yeah. teams in the history 
of the sports, especially Detroit Mercy this season. My goodness. Yeah. I think we could go ahead and cross them off the list. Huh? Yeah, well, Cleveland State gets IUPUI first round, so maybe a, a little tune-up before they get hot. Looking like a pretty good path. For Cleveland State, a program that's had some success in recent years. They kind of fell yeah. off this season, right? But don't sleep on Cleveland State. I guess they would be a pretty solid flyer at plus 2,000 to win the I Horizon guess, tournament. Yeah, now that I look at the bracket, as I realize Milwaukee is playing Detroit Mercy and Cleveland State's playing IUPUI, you can kind of guess who's going to come out and face Oakland in the first round because, let's be real, I'm going to pencil in Milwaukee and Cleveland State to win those games, so they're getting – IPFW or Robert Morris, which maybe that's a pretty decent advantage for them knowing their uh, their seating beforehand, so they get the game plan for one of those two teams that I think play pretty similar. So we'll see. Can I give you a flyer play myself? Give me the flyer. You mentioned him already, Noah Reynolds on Green Bay, right? He's been carrying them. Transferred over from Wyoming last year. I remember betting on this kid and rooting for this kid last season when he was on the Wyoming squads. Was hurt all the time last year, and he was hurt all the time this season. Rumor has it, Noah Reynolds posted on his Instagram story the other day saying, I'll see you guys on Thursday. Okay, that, may, that might be a great sign for Green Bay here in this spot. And I'll tell you what, Javon, Green Bay typically is down there with IUPUI, and Detroit Mercy is you know one of the worst teams in the horizon. Not this season. Even without Noah Reynolds, they hung around a little bit and made some noise. And I'm willing to take a stab at Green Bay at plus 11 hundo getting their best player back, and who I think is the best player in this conference, Noah Reynolds, who's averaging 20 points a game this season. Unbelievable. He comes back for the conference tournaments. I think he carries his Green Bay team at least to a conference finals um, and, and makes some noise there. Maybe I can hedge out potentially, but I see Green Bay, GB. Great abbreviation, great team with a great player, and Noah Reynolds making some noise at plus 1,100. Yeah, I can get behind that. If uh, if he's healthy and playing well, I, I talked about Wright State. Even if they uh, aren't the ones to make it through, it is tough to trust either one of those teams that they'd end up facing. So I can see it. Can I take you to the Patriot League, one of my favorite mid-majors? That's a crazy statement that you call them <laughs> your favorite. That league that league has been chalk central for five years, It maybe more. Well, I'm a big Navy guy. Okay, I've never hit that. that, right? I'm a big Navy midshipman guy, and they are in this conference. All right, Javon, don't be anti-mill here. We got a root for the midshipmen. <laughs> um, but they're not going to win anything or do anything in this um, you know, conference tournament this season. Unfortunately, my Navy midshipmen have taken a step back this year after actually being pretty solid in recent years and even playing Colgate in the conference championships. We've seen them. Okay, uh, Navy, not this year, that boys. I really appreciate the hearts and the effort, but they're not going to make any noise. Let me give you guys a breakdown of what's going on in the Patriots conference tournament this year. It does start up on Tuesday, March 5th. Uh, they're going to be played at the uh, higher seeds, home courts, just like a lot of these small mid-major conference tournaments. Colgate, all right, not the toothpaste, the dominant mid-major. They have won the last three Patriot League tournaments, and they've all been blowouts, okay? They absolutely own this conference, um, maybe the most out of any mid-major. It's unbelievable. Um, I will say, though, American, Lafayette, Boston University, Lehigh, and Bucknell have all played pretty solid this season. It's been a little bit of a better Patriot League. Typically, it's Colgate and 50 feet of crap. And then the rest of the squads, this year you've got some teams who are pulling off upsets, giving Colgate um, some trouble, right? Um, and I've got a couple plays that I'm looking at in Ayin. Uh, but before we dive into that, got to give your respect to Colgate, the defending champion. Colgate, the favorite this year at minus 210. Yep. You heard that correctly, minus 210 to win their conference tournament. Javon, where is your head at with the Patriot League? It's another year of Colgate or nothing for me. And I'm mm. definitely not going to be laying that number, but I think that is a pretty indicative sign of what to expect for this conference. I mean, they have a trio of you know veteran guys who are just, I would say, head and heels above pretty much everybody else in that conference. And I kind of feel more confident of the fact that you said a lot of those teams have been playing kind of well, definitely better than past years. So the gap's a little smaller, but uh, they also, you know, played them pretty tight over the past, you know, couple weeks towards the end of the season. Like Lehigh came out with a three point loss. Uh, American also beat them, I think, when they played them at home. Uh, yeah, 66 64. So, like, throughout the rest of the season, at the end of the season, Colgate's had some close calls, which I honestly like for them coming into this tournament because mm -hmm. it's not a spot that they've really been in in the past couple of years. So uh, it's the same dominant Colgate team I think we've seen for the past 
handful of years. And I, I like that they're a little battle tested coming into this tournament as opposed to the last handful. Mm. You mentioned my dark horse. How about the Lehigh Mountain Hawks? What are we thinking about Tyler, Whitney, Sydney, and this Lehigh team that has hung around all season? They have played some of their best basketball towards the end of the season. Now, I know they're coming off of two losses to Boston U and Colgate, but that was an OT loss by two points to Boston, and that was a three-point loss where they crawled back and almost pulled off the comeback in the upset against Colgate in that last game. I almost count those as two wins, and before that, they ripped off one, two, three, four, five straight dubs. Do not sleep on this Lehigh team. They are playing their best basketball of the season, Javon, and they got close to knocking off Colgate in the last game of the regular season. I would not be shocked if this Lehigh squad, who's led by an absolute stud guard and Tyler Whitney Sidney, who dropped 25 points in that last contest against Colgate, makes some noise, shocks the world, and knocks off the toothpaste at minus 210. All right, give me Lehigh. At plus seven hundo, uh, the second shortest odds to win the Patriots. That is crazy. Seeing a team be the second, um, you know, shortest odds sitting that high and that juicy. But I'm going to take a flyer on them. Sure, gun to my head. If I had to pick a winner here, I'm going to go with Colgate. They win this conference every single season. But I want to get a little fun here, a little nasty. And I think Lehigh has a chance. I'll lock them in at plus seven hundo. Dude, if they can get past that Lafayette game, which I guess I could play this for uh, for both sides of it. It's tough to beat a team three times, and you're going to hear that a lot yep. in conference tournament talk. Uh, they did beat Lafayette twice already in this regular season, so that might be tough. But the one that I was kind of eyeing was right there with you. If they are able to get to that semifinal game, I mean, they lost those games, two of them in the regular season, against Boston by a combined four points or three mm. points, and one of those was in overtime like you alluded to. Uh, so that's that's playing a team really well two times. If you get to that game, I would not be shocked if they finally got over the hump. So it could get interesting if they get to the final. It's extremely hard to beat a team three times. I don't care how good you are. I don't care how bad your opponent is. This is college basketball. This is why we love it so much. It's nearly impossible to beat a team three times in one season. We'll see if they're able to do it. Javon, you already mentioned this as well, but American and Lafayette were actually both able to pull off upsets and beat Colgate during the regular season. The one team that did not but got super close was Lehigh. I love that angle as well. They didn't beat them, but they got super, super close at the end of the season. I think maybe you take a stab at plus seven hundo. That's just too much value for a team playing their best basketball as we head into this tournament. Yeah, I'm with that. Dubs. Let me take you to the neck, which was formerly one of my favorite conferences in college basketball, no longer. Mount St. Mary's is left. Okay, they're on to bigger and better things in the MAC. Okay. Let's talk about the neck, though, Javon. This conference is moose. Okay. The fact that we're seeing Central Connecticut State as a favorite in any conference tells me they should probably disband it, but they can't. And we're here and we got to talk about it. Okay. All these games, guys, uh, this tournament, this conference starts up on Wednesday, March 6th, this week. All the games will be on campus sites at the home of the higher seeds and the teams reseed in the semifinals, just like the ASUN tournament, like we talked about. Only the top eight teams from the neck compete in this tournament. That's kind of beat, right? Might as well throw all those crummy teams in there, in my opinion, but only the top eight get to compete. All right. Last year, Mary Mack won this conference tournament, but they didn't get to go dancing because of the stupid rule where you come up from D2 or D3, you got to sit out for a couple of years. So it was fairly Dickinson. They got the auto bid by default. Weird conference, Javon. I feel like weird stuff happens in this conference almost every season. This year, we're seeing Central Connecticut State, who last season was one of the worst teams in college basketball, as the plus 120 favorite to win this neck conference tourney. Javon, who are you eyeing in this conference? Are you going with two of the favorites in Central Connecticut State and Merrimack? Are you looking at some value plays? Where is your head at with the neck? So my head is definitely at take some value plays in the neck. Okay. And it... Some of it is, I guess, maybe you can call it like recency bias in the last few years, but like these teams uh, with Central Connecticut State and Merrimack, like we've seen them be in the depths of some of the worst college basketball teams in all of D1. And let's be real, they only are that much better this year because the rest of the conference is that much worse. So like mm. I, I don't believe, like especially Central Connecticut State, which their offense is boosted up a lot by playing really bad defenses, they can't get away with consistently jump shooting in a game because they don't do that. It's not their offense. Uh, Mary Mac too. They go through ridiculous stretches where they look awful on offense. So like, I think a lot of weird stuff is going to happen. And I think you agree in this conference tournament, kind of looking at Wagner here, 
which is mm. a massive value stab. Uh, they're the sixth seed in this tournament, and they get Sacred Heart first, and then they're going to reseed. But if everything stays the same, they're going to get Mary Mac coming after that, assuming they beat LIU, which I think they do. Uh, Wagner's kind of a team that's been there, done that. I, I especially love that you look at them, and I remember this from betting on them or betting against them a couple times. They have absolutely no home court, so they're not really affected by this uh, playing away from their home because they're seven and five at home, but still six and ten on the road. So really, no difference there. And honestly, some of their bigger wins in conference have come on the road. Uh, so maybe they're just road warriors. I don't know if that's a thing you can say with Wagner basketball, but they're uh, they're w- one of those teams like they're going to play super slow, which I think works to you know, especially for teams playing on the road. But it works in the matchups against like a Central Connecticut State or a Mary Mac teams that not that they want to play fast, but they can get out of their offensive rhythm very, very easily. So uh, I think this is a crapshoot tournament where you take your value stabs and Wagner's mine. Hmm. I've got one. I've got one I really like. Can I go? Figured, figured you would. Sure. How about the LeMoyne Dolphins, folks, at plus 1,400? Nobody's talking about them. Nobody cares about them. Nobody gives a hoot about the LeMoyne Dolphins sitting at plus 1,400. I do, and let me tell you why. We've seen teams who have been co- gotten called up from Division Two or Division Three in recent years find some success in these conference tournaments. I don't know what it is, Javon, but – we know there's that stupid rule where you get called up to D1, you got to sit out for a couple seasons, you can't go dancing, even if you win your conference tournament. We saw it happen to Merrimack last year. We saw it happen to Bellarmine a couple years back, right? I don't know what it is, but I feel like not being able to go to the NCAA tournament has provided some extra motivation for these new teams up in D1 to have just an unbelievable bender of a conference tourney. I don't know what it is, but we've seen it every year since these teams have started to come up to D1. I've got mine for this season, Javon, and I'm taking a stab, a flyer, if you will, on the LeMoyne Dolphins, who have already beaten the best team in this conference two times this season, Javon, pretty easily. I'm talking about Central Connecticut State. They've already beaten them twice. Very impressive. People forget, look, this LeMoyne team started out the season with a 94-57 to loss at Georgetown. They were nervous. Apparently, they were out there early shooting around, running around like little kids in school. They were so excited to just be playing in a real arena like Capital One for that game. They were shell-shocked. They got off to a hard start. They lost four of their first five games. Now, a lot of those were by games, but they got off to a hard start to the season. Down the stretch, though, Javon, this team against the better squads in the neck, who they're going to have to face down the stretch here, they played their best basketball against them, and they even beat the Central Connecticut State team twice including an OT contest um, in middle February. So I like this LeMoyne squads. Uh, they can shoot the living heck out of the basketball. Sutherland, I think, is one of the better players, if not the best player in the neck. I'm going to back him and the LeMoyne Dolphins at plus 1,400 to pull off a miracle. You know, it's funny you say that because I think LeMoyne – I was debating between LeMoyne and Wagner, and I think LeMoyne's definitely very active too. But I was looking at – their games against Central Connecticut State because you, you look at it and it's it's very odd when you look at their schedule because they've beaten some really good teams they've lost to some even worse teams and I, I'm trying to figure out how to phrase it but they might almost be so bad that it works in their favor like when they play Central Connecticut State and what I mean by that I mean these teams have, caught them lacking or right yeah, the more yeah. caught these squads lacking a little bit that's that's the point cuz their three point defense is one of the worst in college basketball teams know that so they're trying to exploit that like central connecticut state i talked about it they cannot be a jump shooting team that's not what they are but in the two games against lemoyne they shot 60 combined threes which is not huh. their game which is exactly the reason why everything got very weird in those couple of games so if they do that again especially on a a tournament setting, a situation like this, they're going to be in trouble again. And I wouldn't be shocked, assuming they catch them in, in the semis or at some point because they also recede, like we were talking about. Do not let the LeMoyne Dolphins, do not let Kayeem Cleary, who's an actual bucket, same with Luke Sutherland, do not let these two gentlemen on the Dolphins get hot. It might be too late. Take a stab at the Dolphins at plus 14 Honda, some lunch money, if you will, and see if you could turn that into a serious investment. All right, come on, LeMoyne. Be that team this season that gets called up from D2 or D3 and wins their conference tourney for no freaking reason. Be that squad. Be so sick. Be that squad. All right, Javon, I'm going to keep moving you around. Uh, we're going to take you to the next conference. All right, the Big South. Let's talk about it. All right, 
Uh, this conference tournament also starts up on Wednesday, March 6th, okay? All games will be played at High Point University. Very big asterisk there. Very interesting, Javon. All the games will be played at the number one ranked seeds home arena, all right? The first seeded High Point squads, they're looking to make history, Javon. Will they go to their first ever NCAA tournament? I don't know. We're going to talk about it. We're going to figure it out. High Point, UNC Asheville, by far the two best teams in this conference. And then you got Winthrop and Gardner Webb, and then you got 50 Feet of Shit and Longwood and the rest of the squad. Okay. Gardner Webb, people forget, they beat UNC Asheville two times this season, and they absolutely locked down Pember, the best player in this conference. If you guys don't know Drew Pember, you probably don't follow college basketball that hard. And that's okay. That's what we're here for. But he's the best player in this conference. I do like their path, though. I'll be honest with you. I like UNC Asheville's path here, Javon. I want to hear what your thoughts are, but um, I'm liking Asheville at plus 275 to knock off High Point and shock the world on their home arena. Yeah, I mean, it's a pretty big advantage for High Point, especially being able to kind of control the tempo of the game on their home court, which they've been you know, so good at doing all season. So to have that whole tournament there is pretty elite for them. But I don't love the matchups that they're getting prior to that point. And I think you have a, a pretty similar weed on this Winthrop team and how they might be the ones to pick them off uh, a little earlier. And I would not be shocked to not see High Point get to the extent of this tournament or get even to the finals uh, if they run into that matchup, which would be pretty frustrating for them. But yeah, I think Winthrop's a, a really dangerous team, and I don't disagree with your Asheville angle. I do think it's going to be somebody at the bottom, and kind of went with Gardner Webb, which again, mm. don't love to bet on potential matchups where you're going to have to beat a team three times. But I'm not going to say I'm kind of out on this Asheville team, but something just feels so different when you watch them compared to last season. And it's not that Drew Pember has been really any worse; he's been the same, you know, All Conference caliber player. It's just the rest of the team just they don't feel the same they don't feel like they're playing as a unit nearly as much as they did last season and pember i guess getting in foul trouble a lot of these games hasn't really helped that they've had to scramble around and find different additions find different points and find different guys uh in these games but i don't know something feels weird and gardner weber gardner webb just might be the team that kind of has their number and they have a lot of shooters across the court so i think they could be very very dangerous too if they were to see them for a third time but I do have my high point questions. I think you're in the, the mm. same headspace there. I am. That's why I think UNC Asheville should be the favorite here. I'll be honest with you. I know they have not looked the greatest this season, okay? But they have by far the best roster in this conference tournament. It's not even close. They have the best player by far, okay? I know Duke Miles on uh, high point is a beast. Don't get me wrong. High point's got a couple dogs on that squad. A lot of them. Uh, but I take Drew Pember and I take UNC Asheville here. Um, and if I want to take a flyer, Javon, I would go with Winthrop, like you were saying, at plus 600, okay? If High Point has to play Winthrop again, that could get extremely weird because, Javon, the Winthrop lost by two and by four in overtime in their two matchups against High Point this season. Would not be surprised if Winthrop, who's pulled off some crazy upsets this year, pulls off some more down the stretch and finally breaks the seal and beats his High Point squad. Maybe Winthrop at plus 600 is a pretty good flyer. I'll pair them with UNC Asheville at plus 275. If you take both those plays, I think you're making coins in the Big South. Yeah, I can certainly get down with that. I think it's going to be weird. I don't think it's high point. Yep. Let me take you to another weird conference. Can I take you to the OVC? Of course. W's. The OVC, ladies and gents, and you've got to OVC it. W brackets. I love seeing that every season. Starts up on Wednesday, March 6th. Okay. All games will be played at the Ford Center in Evansville, Indiana. The top two teams, Little Rock and UT Martin, both get double buys. Javon, personally, I think this gives us an angle here for Moorhead State, who's actually the betting favorite at plus 125 in this spot, to make some noise. Okay, Moorhead State does not get a double buy uh, like Little Rock and UT Martin do. And I think that could play into Moorhead State's advantage here. Javon, are you with me in the same headspace? And is that potentially why we see Moorhead State as the betting favorites in this conference tournament. Yeah, I think so. And to see them, I think they're pretty clearly the best team in the OVC, but to see them as the best or as the highest odds or shortest odds after having a really torrential stretch to end the season, which ended up selling them from getting that double buy is, is strange seeing them a favorite after all that. So I a hundred percent am with you. I think it's very telling that they're favorites and I'll tell you what, like I love, 
UT Martin. I've been on them, you know, countless times throughout the season. I love Jordan Sears. They're just such a fun team to watch because they're going to go out there and chuck 35 threes every single game and play the fastest tempo you've ever seen. I can't trust them in a tournament setting, especially against a, uh, a team in a program who's been there, done that multiple times before, uh, especially like defensively. They're not great, but they also don't do anything to like press the issue. Like you're not going to have a defense that's going to generate turnovers. It's just going to be a, you know, traffic cone defense for a majority of the time, which when you're going against the more Ed state team, that's a little more physical than you. It's probably a problem. And assuming mm-hmm. again, that that is the matchup that ends up happening. Uh, so I, I'm not a UT Martin fan. I think this is perfectly set up for them to choke. And the fact that Moorhead State is the favorite sitting right behind them, having to play the extra game, seems pretty telling to me. I think you agree. One of my favorite conference tourney winners, Moorhead State. All right. And I do have to interrupt this broadcast, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Queens just pulled off an upset in the first round of the Eight Sun tournament. They did it outright. Oh, wow. Okay. Unbelievable. They moved to 5-0 and against the spread on neutral courts since they've been called up to D1 after going 1-15 this year on the road. Javon, nobody wanted to bet Queens, and they just came through and won the first round against FGCU. My plus 8,000 Eight Sun future moves on. That's huge. And I do have to say, too, it's looking like Jacksonville is going to close this one out. They're up six Ooh. with 40 seconds left. I think that is disaster situation for EKU. Now that they are seeing super slow team followed by potentially a team that can match every single thing that they're doing in the first two rounds, that, I mean, it's, that could be big for your Queens future. I think it's big for everybody who ends up in the bottom half of that bracket. This is March, folks. This is why March is the greatest month to bet on sports. It is the wildest shit to ever exist in the sports betting world. All right. First rounds of the first tournament to start up in the conference tourney era here, Javon. Looks like both dogs are going to win outright. That's big. Oh, man. This is why we love college basketball. Let's hope we get more upsets down the stretch. All right. I do have to deliver you unfortunate news, however. You did get a Duke pull away win by 15. Which, hate that for your, your bet on NC State, but that means we might be in store for something from the Longhorns pretty soon. Oy, oy, oy. You know what Ron else? Ron always got to bring me back down to earth. Appreciate just just had to let you know because I was, I was a little surprised to see the gap widen there. You know what else I'm really surprised about? McNeese is only up three at halftime against Houston Christian. Oh, they're, gosh. They're minus 29 in that game. Oh, gosh. And we're going to talk about them towards the end here. But let me take you to the Missouri Valley Conference. Can I? You can. Sure. Ladies and gents, Arch Madness. Don't know why they call it that, but I'm going to keep calling it because it's electric. Begins up on Thursday, March 7th of this week. All the games will be played at the Enterprise Center in St. Louis, Missouri. The NBC tourney, I feel like it always ends up being the craziest one, Javon. Every single season, the games are nuts. There's buzzer beaters. There's teams winning that shouldn't be. It's just absolute madness. It's the epitome of madness. It's the epitome of March, okay? I'm so excited for the NBC. It's going to be absolutely electric. Javon, will Indiana State and Drake both get auto bids? That is the question. Both these teams have been wagons. They are the first and second favorites, obviously, to win this conference tourney, but they could each get in with an auto bid potentially, depending on the rest of the country, what's going on there. All right. Indiana State's breakout star, Robbie Avila, went viral this season. He's got specs, he's got a belly, and he's got great stats. And he went absolutely viral this season, Javon. He led the Sycamores. Um, all year. They carried them to one of their best seasons in recent history, okay? And then you got Tucker DeVries, who powered Indiana State through the tourney, or sorry, powered Drake through the tourney last year. Um, He's going to get another shot this season, Javon. Tucker DeVries, one of the best players, not only in this conference, but in my opinion, in the country. Is he going to get to go to a second straight NCAA tournament? What are your thoughts? I think so. And I I love that Indiana State team. They're fun. They're Damn good. Robbie Avila is not just a meme. He is uh, such a fun guy to watch and fun player to watch. Um, but I want to take my talents to the team that's been here, done that before, especially with the way that Tucker DeVries has closed out the season. Very, very strong in a lot of these games where, frankly, he's had to be because some of these games for Drake have been down to the wire closer than they should be. 
Uh, so I, I'm looking at this. I, I don't think it's a cakewalk for Indiana State. I think Drake is where I want to lay, you know, my money on this one. And it's uh, I don't want to say weird to see them as underdogs or not the favorites after a couple of years. It just something doesn't feel right about it. Not that Indiana State mm. shouldn't be the favorite, but I, I like Drake to have a really strong tournament and propel themselves into March Madness because I think the way it shakes out now, correct me if I'm wrong, is Indiana State. If they were to win the tournament, Drake would not get an auto bid. But if the other way, it's the other way around, maybe Indiana State has a shot as a yes. now large. That state. makes sense. That math checks out. Yep. I would think so. I mean, there's not to get off topic, but a lot of mid majors that probably deserve some auto bids that maybe are not being considered. Cough, cough, USF, if they don't win their conference tournament in the American. Uh, so I don't know. I don't know how they're going to respect Indiana State. I think they should be in regardless, but I think Drake is going to have a strong tournament. Mm. I'd like to see Drake win it. I'd like to see Tucker to rise, you know, get another chance to make some madness happen in March in that NCAA tournament. I don't know if they're going to get the chance, Javon. I don't know if they're going to be able to get through the Bradley Braves. Ooh. Send it plus 350, the third shortest odds to win the uh, Missouri Valley Conference here. This team gets zero respect. They get zero credit. They get zero talk, zero hype at all. And all they've done this season is win games. Now, have they won the big games, the ones against the best squads in this conference? No, they have not, but they played them close. They took Indiana State into OT earlier this year. They kept the game against Drake close to end the season. They did lose that game, unfortunately. But honestly, Javon, my contrarian brain is starting to tick. All right, It's starting to think, hey, they got close in the regular season. They had no cigar, right? Uh, but they're going to get another chance to knock off some of these you know, bigger-name squads like Indiana State and Drake. And I wouldn't be surprised if they do it. Guys, this Bradley team, one of the best passing teams I've ever seen in college basketball. They are unbelievable. They are undervalued. They are underrated. They've got two studs in Duke Dean and Malavi Leones, foreign kid, the forwards, who are absolute beasts. And this team, I mean, they've got extreme depth. They play eight, nine guys a game. Uh, this is the most talented Bradley Braves team I've seen in recent history. Nobody wants them. Nobody's talking about them. They didn't win the big games during the regular season, but they're getting some respect on the odds here to win this conference tourney. I wouldn't be surprised if they pull it off. I'll take a stab at them at plus 350. That seems short. I'm surprised you didn't go with the, the other team that they might play. I know you love Xavier Johnson, and they're going to be uh, playing them in that 3-6 game if they find their way through. That was kind of the team that – I thought would have a chance in that game. I think the game's going to be super ugly. I mean, you can pencil me in for whatever the under is in the total in that game with the way that Arch Madness usually plays out. Um, but it's going to be gross. I think it's going to be a, a coin flip game. Whoever gets out of that game, I wouldn't be shocked to see challenge Drake. But, you know, hmm. I, I looked at this bracket and I said, who's the team that I don't want to play right now if I'm one of these top seeds? I think it's Belmont. It's Belmont. Huh. They close the season playing so much better, and they have a couple of guys, and I, I love I'm a huge K. Tyson fan. He has been so good for that team. I don't want to see Belmont right now, and that especially extends up to the top of the bracket who could potentially be seeing them, you know, assuming they get past Valpo, which they should. Um, that's a scary team right now. So I'm nervous if I'm sitting there at the top. Belmont, typically a very, very good team in this conference. They lost a lot of their best players from last season, and nobody had any expectations for them. They started out slow. But don't let the Belmont Bruins get hot. It might be too late, folks. Okay, yeah, they're going to hang do. around. They're sitting at plus 1,500 in between the Southern Illinois Salukis and Northern Iowa Panthers, who I wanted to mention really quick. If I could fast forward and make this Northern Iowa Panthers team uh, two years older, I'd take a stab at them at plus 11 hundo, but – they're a little bit too young, and besides Titan Anderson holding it down there as a veteran, everyone else pretty much a freshman or a sophomore. Um, they've got some really good young players. I'm not going to lie. I like this Northern Iowa team a lot, but they've also pulled off a lot of upsets already during the regular season against some of these better teams, and they're a little bit too young for me to back in this tournament. So I'm going to go with the more seasoned um, squads in the Bradley Braves. Gun to my head. I like Drake to win this thing if I had to just pick the winner, but – I think Bradley is going to really make that game tough uh, once they get to face him, if they can get through uh, Xavier Johnson, like you were talking about, at Southern Illinois. If they had another guy next to him, I'd be down to take a stab at them at plus 22 hundo, but it, it's a one-man show, and in a yeah. conference tournament, I can't take a stab at that. Can't do yeah, it. that's totally fair. I'll be rooting for him, though. All right. Arch Madness, ladies and gents. Lock in. 
going to be some great games starting up on Thursday. Okay. Let me take you to the WCC. And this one should not take long, Javon. We know there's two wagons in this conference, Gonzaga and St. Mary's. This conference tournament also starts up on Thursday, March 7th. All the games will be played at the Orleans Hotel and Casino W's in Las Vegas. That's very cool. I wish I could teleport there and teleport home. Uh, St. Mary's, they were undefeated in conference play until the other night, Javon, when we took Gonzaga plus two and a half. Shouldn't have taken the points. Didn't need them. They knocked off St. Mary's on their home floor for their first conference loss of this 2024 season. Insane. They went that long. And I feel like a team that loses their first conference game in that last game of the season is not a team that I want to be back in going into the conference tournament because they're going to have less confidence going into it than they had all the rest of the year. Okay. Give me the Zags. Give me Graham EK. I'm going to back the favorites in this spot. And what's crazy about this conference tournament, uh, ladies and gents, is that St. Mary's and Gonzaga has won it every single year since 2008. So we can go ahead and rule out San Francisco. We can rule out Santa Clara's, the Loyola Marymounts, the Portland's, the San Diego's. Okay, we can rule out all these teams because there is zero chance they can hang with either the Zags or St. Mary's. But it's got to be Gonzaga and it's got to be Grammy K. Javon. What are your thoughts? Yeah, first, I mean, I want to ask you because there's a reason why St. Mary's and Zags have been dominating this conference. And it's not just because they're dominating in the regular season, but it's that buy system, dude, that they have in the WCC. I feel like you you may not like that, and I I kind of love it. I don't know what your you think what your it gives an advantage are. to those guys. What do you think? Yeah, I mean it does, and I feel like it should. Because like I I'm thinking now, looking at a lot of these teams, that I mean yes, I'm a little biased because like I want these teams in the tournament, but the teams like a USF and the American, who we'll talk about that conference, I guess, in the next pod. But that is going to be a ridiculously difficult tournament for anybody to win, and for all they've done and. The regular season, I feel like they deserve a little bit more of an edge that they've been getting or than that they will get seeding wise in that tournament just because of the way it's structured. And like same thing with McNeese. Like I feel like McNeese is any is that one team kind of like the Zags that is so head and heels above the rest of their conference. Like they should get a double or triple by because like what business do they have playing incarnate word for the third time this season? And they've already beat by 30 <laughs> points. It's just like I, I kind of feel like a lot of these mid-major conferences that have bigger teams out of this year in and year out, like they should protect them. I have no problem with that. A lot of people hate the WCC doing that, and I, I like it. Mm. Yeah, it's definitely no fun. But those teams yeah. have deserved that right, you know? At the end of the day, Gonzaga and St. Mary's are paying the bills in that conference. Yeah, I mean, they are supporting financially the Santa Claras, the San Frans, Loyola Marymounts, Portland's, they are supporting those teams financially without Gonzaga and St. Mary's. Those schools would have nothing. Plain and simple. Yeah. So they you, would you have take care of them nothing. and you defend them. I'm with you. I'm with you. Yeah, I think they deserve it, right? They do. They do. Do I, I think do. it's soft that they play in that conference in the first place? Yes. And that yeah, is I mean, of course. Of course. It's just, it's a difficult situation. I mean, where, where are they going to go? Like the, the Pac-12? I guess. Yeah, probably. That's that what I would recommend. Uh, that conference is not much better, realistically. You mean the Pac two. <laughs> yeah, I mean the Pac two. Where where are they going to be now? That's going to be. Who are they going to play against? Yeah, they're going to play against themselves. I don't. I don't even know. I don't know who's going to be left at this point. But to Can we uh, come together and agree that it's not St. Mary's year. We hate that they're coming off that loss to end their season to Gonzaga on their home floor, and they're going to be lacking confidence. And maybe, maybe just maybe, we see the Zags and Graham E. K. A guy I've been following for. Gosh, I don't know how long since he was also at Wyoming, big Wyoming podcast today. Um, yeah. I've been following this guy for, I mean, it almost feels like five years. I know he sat out a year because of an injury. He started out atrociously at the beginning of the season, but man, has Graham EK waking up, Javon. I mean, he's the best player in this conference by far. It's not even close. He's debatably one of the best players, one of the best bigs in the country at this point. It's got to be Graham EK and the Zacks, even if they're minus money at minus 115 against St. Mary's at plus 110. It's got to be the Zacks, right? They just have their look in their eye right now. And really, yeah. the past month they have, I think, one of the most underappreciated, not talked about wins in all of college basketball this season is the Zags going to Kentucky and beating them right as Kentucky started to heat up and become the team that we're kind of seeing now because everybody's kind of discounted the Zags. You know, they haven't been the Zags we've been used to seeing this season. They've had a couple of losses uh, in conference, you know, against St. Mary's, they beat them on their home court. 
even if you go back to like non-conference, they lost to Washington when they were on the road. They lost a the game to Purdue, which give them an excuse for that. It's one of, if not the best team in the country. Um, but they haven't been nearly as dominant. But now, over the past month or so, really after that St. Mary's loss, that's when they started to kick it in. And that's when they went to Rupp and they beat Kentucky. That's when they started this new little minutes lineup that they have with Ben Gregg, Graham E.K., and Anton Watson, and they look unstoppable, which – you should probably look unstoppable against Portland and Pepperdine, but against St. Mary's, which they just had that game, I think they're really developing something that looks really good and they've figured out how to play together. So I think this team somehow, some way is sneaking up on people this season as they've started, you know, coming together. And we're going to move because we have other conferences to talk about, but I do want this on records. Ben Gregg. All time glue guy Ben Gregg, yeah. never going to get talked about one bit. It's all going to be Grammy K talk down there in the paint for Gonzaga. But Ben Gregg is the heart and soul of that team, and they go where he goes. And he's played great down the stretch. It's not always with points, right? He finds ways to affect and benefit the team in other ways rebounds, just absolute freaking grit and hearts diving around the courts, you know, taking tough charges. The guy's a stud. If you love watching college basketball, keep your eyes peeled on Ben Gregg. He is extremely undervalued for this Gonzaga team. Absolutely. He's the heart and soul. Heart and soul. All right. Gonzaga minus 115 should be a good look. Should. W's. Let's move to the CAA. One of my favorite conferences over the last couple of years. Typically, you know, a big time divide between the top and the bottom of this conference. Um, the tournament does start up on Friday, March 8th. They will be playing in Washington, D.C. Hey, you're right in my backyard at the Entertainment and Sports Arena. I don't know what that is or where that is. Um, never even heard of that in my life, but it's definitely not Capital One. But if my dark horse team that I'm going to talk about here in a moment makes some noise and down the stretch is in, you know, the semis or the championship, I might have to find that arena and go boots on grounds. But we'll see if they can even get there. Um, the defending champion is Charleston, Javon. Uh, they were unbelievable last season. Okay, Pat Kelsey's Cougs, they were great last year. Unbelievable. They put the entire nation on notice. Okay, this year, though, it has not been, you know, as pretty. They lost, you know, probably their best player. They still have a lot of guys. We know they run an extremely deep sets. They're not like a, you know, six or seven rotation squad. They play eight, nine guys a game. That's what Pat Kelsey does. He wants to play everybody, okay? They did finish the season winning their last nine regular season games in a row. I will give them some respect there. And they are looking to defend their crown, Javon. They are the defending champions of the CAA. They're probably going to have to beat UNC Wilmington, though. Um, and that squad beat Kentucky on their home floor earlier this season. So they're capable of pulling off some crazy upsets. And we know that UNC Wilmington has been Charlotte, uh, excuse me, Charleston's kryptonite over the past couple of years. Um, up until Charleston finally broke the seal and beat this team uh, a couple of years ago, UNC Wilmington beat them, I think, 15 times in a row or something insane like that. Um, unbelievable. They own Charleston. Okay. I wouldn't be surprised if they knock them off once again this year. That's why I'm going to go with a dark horse in this conference. But I want to hear Javon's side here. Who are you taking a stab at in the CAA? Yes, yeah, so you definitely have a bigger grip on this conference than I think I do. But kind of looking at Hofstra, which mm. they, uh, they're they on the side of the bracket where, I mean, you're going to get the winner of Delaware and the first round game between Elon and Hampton. So not that that's a layup because I think Delaware can catch a couple of teams sleeping, but I am a sucker for Tyler Thomas and Dubar, I guess, for that matter, too. Those are two guys who you don't really have many of those outside of, like, Charleston when you talk about, like, a pair of guards that can go and get a bucket really at any point, which is, means a lot in a whole conference that's really offensively void of much talent and offenses that go out and score 70 points a game. There's not much there. So uh, I, am, I love those two guys, and uh, really with this Drexel team, I have – issues assuming they see them with you know the consistency of their offense they match up pretty well against drexel because they have the size inside it's not like you're going to see big numbers from hofstra but they've done pretty well at containing amari williams you know throughout the season he had little stretches in the two games that they played but they've shown some capability to do it so like i think they're my slight dark horse if anything i know they're the three seed but i uh definitely want to target somebody at the bottom of that bracket i find it hard to trust drexel so I like the matchups for Hofstra. I feel extremely confident letting our listeners know here that College of Charleston is not going to win this conference tournament. Really? This is the conference to take a stab at a dark horse 
or somebody else. I've watched this College of Charleston team play damn near every night this season, Javon, almost every game. And there's just something off about this team. There's something different about them. They're missing their glue guy from last season. They still have Rain Smith, who's coming off of, I think he had 10 three-pointers made in a game last week. He's an unbelievable shooter. But this team is still missing their guy. Um, and I have not – there's there's something off with this Charleston team. I don't know what it is from last season. Okay, let me give you my dark horse that I'm taking a stab on um, in the CIA. I'm going to go with Towson at plus 12 Honda, Javon. And let me Towson. tell you why. Yeah, last year, that was Towson's year last season, Javon. They had Nick Timberlake. They had Cam Holden. Towson was extremely talented for a mid-major. Um, and I'll tell you what, I'm a Pat Scary guy, their coach. He's been there for, you know, almost the last decade or so. He's built up this Towson program. I've been very impressed. He's had his hands full this season, replacing Nick Timberlake, who went on to Kansas to come off their bench and stink, and Cam Holden, who was their best player last season, who was like a 6'7", point forward who just dominated he had his hands full replacing these guys but somehow some way pat scary put together an absolutely um treacherous young athletic defensive-minded squad and they're one of the most raw squads he's ever had i'm telling you what i know they're coming off with three losses in their last five games to end the season javon but i still love what i saw out of this towson tigers team the entire season much like we saw i don't know uh, a Michigan Wolverines football team who didn't even make the college football playoffs two years ago, heard all that noise, heard all that talk, lost a lot of their stars, and still find a way to get into it next year and end up winning the whole shebang. Those are the vibes I get from Towson in the CAA tournament here because last year they should have won it. They didn't. It was Charleston, team of destiny type. Um, Towson got beat. This year nobody wants them. Nobody expects anything from them. But Tal this Towson team, Javon, has probably the best defense in this conference, and that plays – in the CAA tournaments because down the stretch, can Charleston bank on Rain Smith hitting 10 threes in a game? Probably not. More of a postseason feel, okay? And I'll tell you guys what, I've already seen it. It's not Charleston's year. As much as I'd love to say it, they were a wagon for us last year, absolutely printing coins. It's not the Cougs' year. Give me a dark horse stab on Towson at plus 1,200. Wow. You do love that Towson team. And they can I sure as hell defend. I, so I can see that happening. And we got some value. I'll tell you what, the last two weeks has not been good to Towson down the stretch. I'll be completely honest. They've lost a couple of games. But if you took those two weeks out, I mean, they'd be, they'd be sitting right up there with Charleston and Hofstra at the top. They yeah. will. All That's right. Fair. I'll take a stab at the young boys down there in Baltimore. All right. Plus 1,200. Dubs. We're going to power through these last couple of conferences, Javon. Um, this pod's going about an hour, which is a W. We still have the SOCON to cover, the Summit, the America East. The Big Sky, and then Javon's favorite, of course, save the best for last, the Southland to talk about. We're going to power through these, okay? Let's go to the SOCON. I'm going to give the people a breakdown really quick. It starts this Friday, March 8th. All games will be played at the Harris Cherokee Center in Asheville, North Carolina. Samford, that's the team of destiny this season in this conference, Javon. They won a school record 26 games this year out of nowhere. Unbelievable. They're looking for their first SOCON tournament title, but the defending champs, Furman, who really did not play uh, well at all this season or impress anyone, they're still hanging around at plus 550, the third shortest odds. And in between them and Sanford, you've got UNC Greensboro, who I'm loving. But I want to hear who Javon likes in the SOCON this year. Who's coming out of this puppy? Well, this is probably a team that's either going to crash and burn immediately or I think they can make a serious run, and it's Western Carolina, another – team where like i'm really a sucker for one of their players and that player is vontarius woolbright who is a triple double machine and this is his going out party his senior year which i think he also had a triple double on senior day the dude is absolutely ridiculous just impacts the game in so many different ways and for not only the first matchup that they're going to see obviously but if they were to get past them and play samford who I mean, they've been nothing short of a team of destiny. Like you've been saying, they've been a wagon. They haven't looked great when they're playing away from home to end the season, which could be uh, a little, should be a little bit of a silver lining. But this is going to be uh, an interesting matchup. And I think Western Carolina's got the offense to take down really any of these teams. And then once we get to or could get to the championship game, which I would not be shocked if it's against the Greensboro and you guys down there, it's really a, a coin flip what happens there. So, I mean, I, I love Woolbright. I think he's going to have uh, a legacy couple moments in the tournament, I'm hoping. Uh, so I like Western Carolina, and I am certainly not mad at you taking Greensboro either. Yeah, let me gas up this play because this might be my favorite angle 
out of any of these mid-major conferences we're talking about today. I am in love with UNC Greensboro at plus 450 to win the SOCOM. Absolutely in love with them. And there's one reason why, Javon. It's Mike Jones. Okay, I'm a Mike Jones guy. All right, this dude built up a Radford program from the ground. They were nothing. He was there for about a decade. He made them at least minimally relevant. Okay, down there in the middle of nowhere, Virginia. This guy is an unbelievable coach. Okay, now he's got his hands full coming over to Greensboro. He's been there for the last couple seasons, and this might be the best team he's had yet. And I'm including some of those Radford squads. They were pretty solid, and they even got one of them to the tournament. Okay, Mike Jones, we trust. Okay, this guy is going to lead UNC Greensboro to the promised land. He's got his son on the squad who's come off the bench at times this season and hit some big buckets. There's something about this Greensboro team that just feels right. And like I talked about with College of Charleston going over the CAA, there's something wrong with the Sanford team. I'll tell you what, when they leave their home arena, they're a different squad. They remind me of my Hokies. They're moose once they leave their home arena, okay? They're not going to win the SOCON this year. They might have had the best season they've ever had in the regular season uh, for Sanford. But that doesn't matter. They're not clutch. They're not going to come through. I would eliminate them at plus 150 from your contention. And I personally think UNC Greensboro is the real favorite here. And you're getting a great number of plus 450. Okay. This team is stacked. They've got Michael Brown Jones down there in the paint, who's just a great forward who can score it well. Keyshawn Langley hits clutch shots. Donovan Atwell has been a stud this season as well. Kobe Langley. Uh, they got the two brothers down there who are just absolute yeah. ballers. Dogs. I got a weird feeling about this Greensboro team. They have the best coach in the SoCon. I'm back in Mike Jones's team at plus 450. Give me Greensboro. They've been just looking at me funny a lot of in a lot of spots like all season. So like I don't I don't know what it is. I mean, I love the brothers, they're dogs, especially on defense, which when you talk about the Sanfords and the Western Carolinas of the world, definitely no defenders compared to the brothers and what they do uh, in the backcourt there. So I don't know. Something has been speaking to me about Greensboro all season, so I would not be shocked to see them make a run in the tournament either. Probably my favorite future that we go over on this podcast, Javon, UNC wow. Greensboro at plus 450. Yep, I said it. Mm -hmm. That's hard. Now let's move on. Okay, before people get too excited, let's move on to the summit. All right, we're going to power through these last couple conferences here. I'll give you guys the breakdown. This summit conference tournament starts up on Friday, March 8th. All the games will be played at Denny Sanford. Premier Center in South Dakota, okay? Oral Roberts has typically dominated this conference, but they've completely fallen off this season. Pretty wild seeing them down there at plus 3,300 to win this conference tournament. That is wild. Kansas City and North Dakota, though, on the other hand, these are two of the most improved teams this season in this conference. They locked down the number two and number three seeds. Um, and I'll tell you what, the Roos, don't let them get hot. It might be too late. They enter this tournament on a six-game win streak. I really like this Kansas City team. We're going to talk about them. But first, Javon, who are you liking to win the Summit Conference basketball tournament? I think it's South Dakota State for me. And I'm a, a big UMKC guy. I just really struggle with the fact that they've played so wildly different away from home, which obviously makes this situation very weird. And one of the teams that's also very, very hot coming into this game is or coming into this weekend is going to be South Dakota State, which I'm looking at. Their last uh, 10 games, there are two teams to beat them, and one of them happens to be UMKC, who beat them, right. of course, when UMKC was at home. Uh, so they're they're the team that I think is going to just continue their little run. Zeke Mayo is going to have a really good set of games, and I, I think UMKC has the power to make it interesting. I'm just not quite there with them getting over the hump and winning it all just yet. I mean, look, these games will not be played at South Dakota State's home arena, but they are yeah, going to be yeah. played in South Dakota which is a yeah. huge plus for that team and a huge minus for schools like UMKC, the Roos, who we just talked about, who have been great this season, but once they leave their home floor, they look like a completely different ball club. You're probably right. All right, this is a conference where, you know, you might want to square up for catch and take South Dakota State at plus 170 because of how hot they've been. They have by far the best player in the conference in Mayo, um, and, you know, they're just the best program in this conference, in my opinion, over the last couple of years. I'm going to take a stab. At UMKC, the hottest team in this conference, coming in on a six-game win streak because I do think maybe they can just stay red hot, keep the confidence up. And with guys like Jamar Brown and Anderson Kopp, uh, two of the best guards in this conference, I just want to take a stab at the Ruse. This is a team that I had my eyes on last season, um, and they impressed me a little bit, almost like a little wagon for me like Queens. And I'm going to return the favor and back them on a value play here in the Summit at plus 700. Not South Dakota State the favorite with the best player. 
played in their home state. Not St. Thomas and the Tommies, who, by the way, are nestled in between UMKC and South Dakota State at plus 260. That's wild to see. Yeah, I'm going to take a stab with the Roos. I can respect that. That team team is still very good. I have my questions, but I think they're going to make some shake, too. Agreed. This conference tournament, though, compared to some of the rest of the ones we talked about, not our favorites. All yeah, right, so let's move all. on to another one. All right, with a heavy favorite, the America East. Let's talk about them. Let's talk about the Vermont Catamounts. And let's talk about this conference tourney that starts up on March 9th, this Saturday. Okay, Javon, the higher seeds they host in this tourney, a.k.a. that's why Vermont wins every single year, every single game. All right. They're just dominant at home, one of the best home teams in college basketball over the last 10 years. And that plays in their conference tournaments significantly into their advantage. Okay. Vermont dominates this conference. They've been the number one seed in seven of the last eight seasons that is nuts they are seeking their 10th march madness appearance since 2003 shocker they are the defending champions like i said they are the favorites uh, at an unbelievable price you know and seeing any teams at minus money to be a favorite you know to win their conference tournament is wild and you should be put on notice because they're probably a favorite for a reason you don't see that in every conference okay but you're seeing it here once again with vermont because they own it javon is there any chance we see another team besides Vermont win this conference tournament? Not thinking so. And I guess the next contender is UMass Lowell, who I got to say I've been pretty impressed with over the course of this season. They've been really good, you know, 20 and 8 on the season, 11 and 4 in conference play. Uh, but Vermont, like you said, there's a reason why they win it every year, head and shoulders above everybody else, and they get to play in their home stadium. Uh, so, yeah, it's probably going to be Vermont and I'm not yep. laying that price but it's hard to see anybody else come out of the America East oh great and UMass Lowell deserves respect okay these are the new kids on the block they were one of the worst programs in college basketball for you know the majority of recent history last year out of nowhere they vault they dominated they even beat their rival UMass incredible um, they are the only team that really stands a chance uh, against Vermont in my opinion they did take Vermont to overtime the first time these two teams played this season but they did end up losing both games to Vermont this year. I feel like UMass Lowell is almost like an easy value play. It's like a simple minded, you know, they're the only team shorter than plus 800s, you know, that's still plus money to not bet on other than the Vermont Catamounts, right? I feel like it's a very simple minded dog. And I think Vermont, unfortunately, I know it's not fun, but they're going to find a way once again to win this conference tourney on their home floor and go dancing. Yeah, absolutely. I'm with you. Let's head to the big sky, okay, because Vermont's probably going to win that thing. And by the way, Vermont, it is worth noting, they did start off slow and they won 15 of their last 16 games to end the season. Insane stretch, okay? But let's head to the big sky. Let's talk about some of these other teams. We've got a tournament starting up here on Saturday, March 9th. All the games in the big sky conference tourney are going to be played at the Idaho Central Arena in Boise, Okay. Eastern Washington clinched the regular season title for the second year in a row. Um, Dylan Jones has to be noted, one of the best players in the country, in my opinion, on Weaver State, averaging close to 20 points per game. The defending champ in this conference is Montana State. We probably don't have to worry about them this year. Okay, they lost all their guys. Um, the favorite this season is actually Weaver State at plus 125 right now. And these odds could change, ladies and gents, by the time you're listening to this. But as of right this second, the Weber State Wildcats, the favorite to win the Big Sky Tourney. Javon, where is your head at with this conference? Yeah, I mean, this one's tough because I got to say I'm a massive Dylan Jones fan, massive Weber State fan, just because he himself makes things so tough for a lot of these teams because he is a matchup nightmare. He can guard really one through five, and he can go and get 30 and 10 on any given day. Uh, I mean, we sit here right now, and they're playing Montana State a little bit before half. Uh, I mean, he's got nine and three, not too much, but it's uh, still weird, weird type of matchup for really anybody going up against Weber State, and it especially helps when the rest of their defense is really good too. So uh, we don't have a bracket out yet because you know some of these games are still being played as we speak. But if they get a good draw. And by that, I mean a lot of teams that don't match up well with them and don't have, you know, the personnel to really penetrate the defense. They're set up pretty well, which I can very well see that happening. And maybe we get a collision course with them in Eastern Washington in the championship. We'll see how that plays out. But, man, it's it's hard to bet against Weber State. I love that team. 
I'm with you. As of right now, gun to my head. If I had to pick the winner, I probably would go with the hottest squad in this conference, Weber State, with the best player in the conference. But I'm going to take a stab at a little bit of a value play here, Javon. Uh, probably the weirdest looking odds to me. Uh, Portland State sitting at plus 420. Nice. Um, are we forgetting this team beat Air Force, UCSB, Cal Baptist, and Fresno State this season before conference play started? Are we forgetting they almost beat Washington State? Ended up losing by about 10 points. This team, Javon, I don't know what happened to them during conference play, but before they got into it, was looking like one of the coolest, trendiest, best mid-majors in the country. Okay? They go into conference play, and they shit the bet. It happened. It is what it is. But Portland State has a chance to hit the reset button and go into conference play or the conference tournaments. And I know they're ending the season on a little bit of a three-game skid right now. They have a game tonight to end the regular season. I think they'll pull out the win on senior night, but we don't know yet. Okay, we'll see if they end up winning that one and kind of breaking their losing streak here. But I'm not forgetting about Portland State and what they did this season, especially early on. I know they're on a little bit of a three-game slide right now. I'm willing to bet they break that tonight at the time of filming this podcast. And I still believe in K.J. Allen, the Texas Tech transfer, leading this team in points. Javon, this team by far has the best defensive efficiency in the big sky. It's not even close. They win with defense. And in a conference tournament with a lot of Moose teams, I want to bet on the defense. And I thought their odds were a little bit short with how bad they played down the stretch. I'm taking a stab at Portland State, the Vikings, at plus 420. You know, you want to hear something pretty crazy about Portland State? Sure. You know the last last day that they won a game away from home? December 31st. Two words. Do. Yeah, that's absolutely insane. So, I mean, they won none throughout the entirety of – conference play after that they beat idaho on the road and that was that's their last road win which is absolutely insane that is absurd now we've seen teams struggle on the roads end up pretty good on neutral courts cough cough yeah wins. could be the difference you know, it's, it's it's different right away games are not neutral games okay but yeah that's wild and they have been really struggling down the stretch but i still believe and i've seen the potential and i think with a little bit of a reset Heading into the conference tournament, I would not be shocked to see the Portland State uh, Vikings make some noise. Okay. Yeah, that would be huge. All right, Javon, cut the shit. We've got the South of Conference to talk about. We're going to close it out perfectly. It could not have been scripted any better. All right, ladies and gents, Javon, a Southland Sharp. I'm not even going to waste any time here. I'm going to go over the deets and I'm going to let him talk. All right. This tournament, the Southland, starts up on Sunday, March 10th. All the games are going to be held at the Legacy Center in Lake Charles. Louisiana. Javon, does this place sound uh, familiar to you? Uh, yeah, it, it definitely does. Oh, why would it sound familiar? Is it because it's uh, McNeese's home court and yep. their home arena? Yep. Oh, yes, it is. Oh, yes, it is. And I bet Will Wade's doing backflips about it. You know, he's excited, okay, in his one and done year here at McNeese before he moves on to a real job. All right. But for now, he's got unfinished business to do with your McNeese State Cowboys. Javon, how are we feeling about your boys? feel great i mean this is mm. their tournament for the taking i mean they're so much better than everybody else in this conference uh i'm actually kind of glad let me get a score check uh never mind i was gonna say i'm glad to see them slip up because they're up three at halftime uh they're currently up 24 so i kind of did what we expect them to do and might even cover that game which is crazy Insane. Um, but yeah they've been they've been battle tested a little bit a couple of these games on the road which we've done well picking out against sila against texas a corpus christi so they've had their chances but yeah they're so much better than everybody in this tournament and will wade certainly knows how to coach in a tournament scenario so uh they should win this conference pretty easily uh i will say that they assume they're going to get corpus christi in the final uh, so that's going to be a dog fight uh, usually i have a lot more to talk about when it comes to the southland conference tournament because it's usually a lot more parody, but with McNeese, that's just it's so top heavy now. It feels like the WCC in the past, you know, all the years before the last two with Gonzaga. Um, but I will say the one team that I'm kind of marking out, kind of like my Texas State team that I think is going to be at the back end, but make a little noise depending on the draw they get. Another one where we don't have the bracket yet. So I'm hoping they don't run into McNeese, but Lamar. Lamar has been sneakily sneakily playing well to end the season. And they have 
really a cast of guys who are just dogs. Like defensively, they've been kind of road warriors for the past couple of games, and I don't think it's really any accident. They have a couple of guys that play really, really well. Terry Anderson is an absolute dog. They have a couple of guards. BB Knight also been a dog on the defensive end too. It's so like they, they're they starting to play well. They're starting to get a little confidence, and I faded them a time or two a couple of weeks ago, and I found out firsthand that they're uh, getting confidence and starting to play much better than they were at the beginning of the season. So don't be surprised if Lamar wins some games they shouldn't, assuming they don't face McNeese. But if McNeese does not win, I would be stunned. I would be shocked. I would be surprised, and I might cry myself to sleep because I need to see that team in the tournament. <laughs> I need it so bad. Well, let me put some fear in your heart real quick before we close this pod out. Okay. Texas AM, Corpus Christi, the defending champs. Probably who McNeese is going to see in the championship in this conference tourney. Okay. This is an insane stat. Corpus Christi beat McNeese 16 straight times, Javon, before McNeese finally broke that streak and swept them this season. That is absurd. Yeah. That's and absurd. Truth, and I went truthfully, back and watched. Truthfully, they should have lost that first game too. That was like the uh, the crazy buzzer beater off an offensive rebound free throw game, which again, that was that was an insane game. But yeah, it's is it's such a different story because Corpus Christi is usually the team that you know is always going to be there, sitting at the top. They're well coached. They always get guys. Now it's McNeese and they're playing second fiddle. So it's been a, an odd season to see for sure. Well, everyone listening, if you're not if you're not hip, Javon has had his eyes on this McNeese squad all season. He said they were going to be a wagon. They were a wagon, and now they're here. Probably going to be minus money to win this conference tourney. Uh, by the time it starts up, uh, they should be because this team has been on Sports Center top ten plays more often than I think the Lamar Cardinals have even pulled off wins on the road this season. Okay, it, it's the talent is not even comparable. If Will Wade and this McNeese Cowboys team blows it, it'll be something we talk about for months. Javon will literally cry himself to sleep. The McNeese State Cowboys have to find a way to get it done this year. This is the best team they've ever had and will ever have. Yeah. It's this year. Has to be. All Has right? to be. Awesome. Well, Javon, we just powered through 15 mid-major conferences, and we didn't even do all of them. Okay, let me give the people a little breakdown of what we're looking to do in the coming days. All right? We're going to cover the Power Five. We're going to cover the bigger mid-major conferences next week, okay, on our next uh, BTL-exclusive college basketball conference preview pod. So stay posted, okay, for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this mid-major preview for the upcoming conference tourneys this week. Please follow us on YouTube. Subscribe to our YouTube at Book It Sports. It takes three seconds. It's free, okay, if we get to 5K subs. By the time March Madness tips off, Javon, I will do a 24-hour stream. So go over to the Book It Sports YouTube page, subscribe, follow. And if you want to watch this pod, if you're listening right now on Spotify and want to see what our uh, our faces look like, our beautiful faces, come over to the YouTube, drop a follow, subscribe, and you can watch the video of this podcast over there as well. Okay. Like I said earlier, we're going to put timestamps in the description so that you guys can come back and check out these specific conferences or teams and see and easily power through this podcast. Okay. And please follow the Book It Sports Podcast Network on Spotify and wherever you get your podcasts, okay? Javon, happy March, my man. Uh, to everyone listening, happy March to those who celebrate. We'll be back with more college basketball content next week, going over some of the bigger conference tourneys. For now, stay posted. We'll be soon. We will.